Okay, so if you're given five different alkanes, and you're told to rank them by the boiling point, which one has the lowest boiling point, which one has the highest boiling point, how can you do this? So we know that for ranking boiling points, you're really looking at which one has the higher intermolecular force, because a higher intermolecular force is going to have a higher boiling point. So the main intermolecular forces in these alkanes is going to be London dispersion forces. And so we can say based on this, that as the London dispersion force is going to be increasing, then we know that our boiling point of that molecule will also increase. So London dispersion force is primarily based on surface contact, and it will actually increase as the surface contact or the surface area in contact between different molecules will increase. So based on this, we can say that ranking the boiling point of alkanes is based on ranking the strength of London dispersion forces. And there's a pretty systematic way of ranking the strength of London dispersion forces in the case of alkanes. So let's go over these steps. So step one is going to be to look at which molecule, which alkane has the higher number of carbons. So you're going to rank by higher number of carbons on the alkane. Highest number gets the top rank. Next, you're going to rank by branching. So in the case of branching, you're going to rank by lowest number of branching. So basically, if you have a lower branching, less branches, then you're going to give it a higher rank than if you have more branches. Third, you're going to rank it by symmetry. So if you have higher amount of symmetry in one molecule, it gets a higher rank than the molecule that has less symmetry. Now, why is this? So for a higher number of carbons, we're actually going to have a higher surface area. So if we have a higher surface area, then we can say that we have more surface contact and more London dispersion forces. In the case of branching, when two molecules are trying to get up close to each other and have more contact, lower branching is going to increase the uh, ability to have more surface contact because branches will kind of get in the way. So low branching is more surface contact and more London dispersion forces. In the case of symmetry, we can say that symmetry, when there's more symmetry, it's easier for there to be more surface contact. So as the symmetry increases throughout the molecule, there's more contact. And just to draw an example of this, if you see this symmetric molecule right here, if I put a second one right next to it, then you can see how the carbons can kind of line themselves up to have the maximum surface contact because it's symmetrical, so they will like match together. Now for our problem following the steps, let's start ranking the number of carbons. So E has six carbons, and then next we have D, which has seven carbons, and then C will have six carbons. Next we have D, which also has six carbons. Finally, we have A, which also has six carbons. So based on this, we can say that molecule D will have the highest number of carbons. So it gets our top priority and the highest London dispersion force and highest boiling point. Next, let's look at branches. So molecule A has one branch, whereas B has two branches. C also has two branches. And then molecule D has zero branches. And molecule E has zero branches. So based on this, we can already say that we have a preliminary ranking for three of the molecules. So molecule D has the highest boiling point because it has the highest number of carbons. Next, we have E, which has the second highest number of carbons and no branches. Followed by that is A, which has one branch and six carbons. So we can say based on this that the highest boiling point is going to be D due to the highest number of carbons. 
and the next one is going to be E, the next one is going to be A. Now, how can we rank between B and C since they both have six carbons and th uh, two branches? Well, we can say that C has symmetry, so it has a higher boiling point than B. So based on this, we can say that B has the lowest boiling point. And that's basically how you apply this to a problem. Uh, I hope that was helpful.